Welcome back AP Stat students. We're going to go ahead and look at section 7.3 and we're going to look at sampling distributions for means. So quantitative data. So when we record quantitative variables, we're usually interested in other statistics as mean, median, standard deviation. Sample means are among the most common statistics. So what we're going to look at is we're going to look at household earnings, average household earnings, a sample size 100. So what we have here is the population distribution. So we're looking at household earnings for everyone in the United States measured in thousands of dollars. And we can see that the mean of that is right here. Now, off to the side, we're now looking at the sampling distribution. So now if I only sample 100 households and calculate those means, this would be our sampling distribution. And so we could see where this is definitely right skewed. This is now symmetrical. So we notice that this is right skew. The mean looks like it's somewhere around 75,000. And I don't even want to estimate the standard deviation or the range, but let's go ahead and do range just because that's easy to calculate. Standard deviation is super hard. So for range, we're going anywhere from zero to crap. It probably goes even farther. So anywhere from like $275,000 to zero. So we'll just estimate it based on the graph. Um, definitely probably goes to millions. Mm, 100,000, yeah. So we should definitely have like little dots out here. We just can't see because there's so many off to the side. Now with our sampling distribution, definitely symmetrical. I'm going to call it symmetrical. I don't want to call it normal without doing calculations because that's something you want to not get in the habit of. So it looks symmetrical. It looks like it's centered probably about the same place. So the mean of our samples is about 75,000. And then when I look at the range of these, even just looking at range, not even standard deviation, but that range is looking like 50,000 like so much smaller than what happens with our population distribution. And so we're seeing that the sampling distribution for the sample size of 100 looks like it's taking away the skewness. It's still centered at the right spot, but we're getting a much tighter spread. And so again, we're seeing the sampling distribution allows us to do things with the data that the original population distribution wouldn't because now we're looking like, dare I say, almost normal. And then we can do some normal CDF stuff. So what do we know? Well, the mean of your sampling distribution should be the same as the mean of your population. The standard deviation of your sampling distribution should be the standard deviation of your population divided by the square root of your sample size. Again, as long as your 10% independence condition has been satisfied. Okay, so these facts are the same no matter the shape of your population distribution. Problem is, is that when we were dealing with proportions, we had a normal approximation for those. That normal condition does not apply to means. So we're going to have a whole different normal condition for means than we do for proportions. So as long as my population is normal, it doesn't matter my sample size. I should be able to do normal conditions with it no matter what. So I could do normal calculations because if the population is normal, the sampling distribution will also be normal. So the length of human pregnancies from conception to birth varies according to a distribution that is approximately normal with a mean of 266 days and a standard deviation of 16 days. Find the probability that a randomly chosen one person 
has a pregnancy that lasts more than 270 days. So a probability that one person, um, so we'll call her X, her pregnancy lasts more than 270 days. I wonder how long that is. With 270 divided by 39, about nine months, okay? Um, so the first thing we have to do is we're going to have to calculate a z-score. So we're going to take our 270 value, we're going to subtract our mean, and divide by our standard deviation. So what's that going to be? 270 minus 266 is 4, divided by 16 is 1 fourth, so 0.25. Okay, we're going to draw our curve. Mean of 0, standard deviation of 1. And it's a 0.25, so it's going to be like right here. And we want the probability that it lasts longer than that, so we're shading above. And then we'll go to our normal CDF. Now with our normal CDF, um, our lower bound is going to be the lower part of our shading, so 0.25. Our upper bound is the upper part of our shading, so 10. Our mean is 0. Our standard deviation is 1. And we'll go ahead and calculate that. So normal CDF, 0.25 to 10. And I get 0 0.4013. So about a 40% chance that someone's going to go longer than 270 days in their pregnancy. Okay, here's the key. Suppose we choose a random sample of six pregnant women. Now we're starting to get into a sampling distribution because now we're doing a sample from the population. X bar is going to be the mean pregnancy length for our six people. What is the mean of the sampling distribution? So the mean of my sampling distribution should be the same as the mean of my population, which is 266. What is the standard deviation? So the standard deviation of my sampling distribution should be the standard deviation of my population divided by the square root of my sample size. So you see, by doing that dividing, it's going to shrink in that spread. So now we've got a spread of 6.532. Is the 10% condition met? Am I allowed to use this standard deviation formula? Because the formula can only be used if it's independent or we meet the 10% condition. So is it reasonable to assume there's more than 60 pregnant women? Absolutely. Actually, at any point in time, it's reasonable to assume there's more than 60 pregnant women. Find the probability the mean pregnancy length for women in the sample exceeds 270 days. Show your work. Okay, so I don't have a lot of space here. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and move this down a little bit so I can calculate some stuff. So we want the probability that the average of our sample, so we want this average to be more than 270. So I'm going to calculate my z-score kind of like I did before, but this time I have a different standard deviation because it's a standard deviation of our sampling distribution. So 270 minus 266 divided by that 6.532. So 270 minus 6, 266, which should be 4. Wow. I can't type today, 270 minus 266, divided by the 6.532, gives me a 0.6124. Okay, so now in our sampling distribution, 
mean of zero, standard deviation of one. We're now looking at 0.6124. We're going to go ahead and put in our normal CDF. Uh, lower bound of our shading is 0 0.6124. Label it as your lower bound. Upper bound is 10. Um, mean is 0. And standard deviation is 1. So normal CDF, 0.6124. And I get 2701. Okay, so why, why, why is it like this? So remember, because we're taking these six people together and we're averaging out that pregnancy length, that's going to keep some extreme late pregnancy or extreme early delivery from affecting it. By averaging it out, the people that are normally in the middle here will pull in these outside values. Okay. Um, the height of young women follow a normal distribution with a mean of 64.5 inches and a standard deviation of 2.5 inches. Find the probability a randomly selected young woman is taller than 66.5. So again, more of the same. Um, so let's go ahead and do a z-score. Um, 66.5 minus our mean 64.5 divided by 2.5. I think this is going to be one point something. Oh, 0 0.8. Sorry, my bad. Um, we are then going to go ahead and draw our curve. And we want to know they're taller than the 66.5. So at my 0, 1, I want it to be greater than that. So then we'll do our normal CDF. Lower bound is 0 0.8. Again, lower bound. Upper bound, 10. Standard deviate, uh, mean is 0. Standard deviation is 1. And then we'll calculate that. So normal CDF, 0 0.8, 10, and we get 0 0.2119. Okay, find the probability at the mean height. Okay, so again, we're saying the mean height of a simple random sample of size 10 exceeds 66.5. So again, we're going to have a mean is going to be the same, 64.5. Our standard deviation should be 2.5 divided by that square root of 10. So that's going to change that for our z-score. Which is 0 0.7906. So then our z-score would be 66.5 minus 64.5 divided by the standard deviation of the sampling distribution. And this gives us a 2.5. Wow, that is a big difference. Um, 3.0. Okay, we draw our curve. Mean, standard deviation, one, two, three. We're now all the way up here, because remember, that sample size tightens up that spread and now makes it less likely that the average of this will be that high. So then again, we do our normal CDF. For some reason, my finger's writing along with my pen. Always fun. Uh, let's see, the lower part of my shading is the 2.53, lower bound. My upper bound is 10. The mean is going to be 0, and the standard deviation is going to be 1.
2.53. And oof, very, very low chance. So less than a 1% chance that if you have 10 young women, that their average height is going to be that much taller than our average. And what is that? Uh, five feet is 60 inches. So, ooh, wow. Okay, so that's it for 73A. The next section, 73B, we're going to talk about what happens if your population distribution is not normal. So this all came from the fact that the population distribution was normal. What if it's not? We'll see you next time.